everyone, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the different topic, which is quantum search and quantum walks. Uh, but uh, I'll try to, uh, I'll speak a little bit about optimization and make some relations with uh, adaptive quantum computing at some points in the talk. So, please bear with me. Um, so, I'm working in a quantum linear optical competition group, quantum competition group in uh, INL in Portugal. I moved there last year, I my school to do not only uh, linear optical quantum computation, but also quantum computation in general. So if you're interested, get in touch. Uh, all right, so this more or less the structure of my talk. So I'm gonna define what are continuous time quantum walks, uh, how you can uh, tackle certain search problems on graphs, using uh, this approach, which was introduced by Andrew Chart and Jeffrey Goldstone, 2004. And I'll mention some results about optimality and the uh, limitations of this algorithm. And uh, finally, I'll mention some ongoing work about trying to use these ideas uh, and apply it to optimization problems. Um, so, okay, so what is a continuous time quantum walk? First, let's define a continuous time random walk, classical. So, here we have some graph and we have some probability of, uh, let's say, some probability of a particle to... Can I use it? Oh, yeah, okay. Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so we have some probability for a, a random number to go around the graph. And so, essentially, we can define a matrix which is called a graph of Hessian, which depends on the degree of the noise of the graph, and depends on the adjacency matrix, that is the matrix of one, if the corresponds to an edge or two otherwise, and then we can write down a differential equation describing the walk, which, uh, um, you know, uh, which has the dependency of the probability uh, function of time. And, and where here is some rate for the particle to go around the graph, some hopping rate, let's say. Now, in quantum mechanics, of course, we have the Schrodinger equation. And so the idea proposed by Anne Schaub and Jeffrey Goldson was to choose your Hamiltonian to be this uh, Laplace, you know, it grows the connectivity of the graph. And, and so we can uh, travel around the graph in superposition uh, according to the, to the short equation. Now, um, yeah, so this is the comparison, of course, this factor of i, it makes a lot of uh, importance, as you all know. And if you just solve the quantum wall in a one dimension, we have this uh, behavior that you might be familiar with. So the probability solution of the classical random walk, where it's a one more propagates like a wave, and we the sign of deviation also propagates, let's say, quite a degree faster. And it scales quite a bit faster in time. So can we use this uh, for something useful? And so there are a lot of one more algorithms out there. I will focus on this one, search problems, but there are proposals to solve NAND trees uh, problems. Also, there are you non know, exponential speed up for graph transversal problems. And many others. It is also a universal model for computation, so you can build these funny gadgets uh, based on quantum walks on graphs to implement quantum gates. And this is also a well known result by Adam Chance from quite some time ago. But as my title of my talk says, I'll focus on search problems. And before I do that, let me go back to how to tackle search problems by uh, analog quantum algorithms, so by continuous time evolution. And so these ideas were introduced by Far Eagle in 98. And, and so the aim here is that, so first of all, we need an oracle that marks our solution. So if you remember from Gova's algorithm, we need a Gova oracle to identify our solution. So here we have an oracle Hamiltonian that's basically a projector that gives a, a certain energy to, to our marked uh, element of our Hubert space. And, and so if we do some time evolution for a fixed time of this Hamiltonian, we actually get back to the overall. And so the, the, the idea of doing now of the search is to have the global oracle added to some driving Hamiltonian, like and the, the, the aim is to find uh, the mark element with the hyperbola. So the, a very simple solution 
which again is very similar to what global algorithm is doing, is to choose driving anatomia to be a one-dimensional projector in the state, which is the equals proposition of every element in the Hilbert space. And one can see the probability algorithm really as a discretization of this. And by the way, I didn't mention, but here I'm thinking about time independent anatomia for the moment. All right, so let's do that. We have the very simple anatomy, which is the sum of two-dimensional projectors, and we can analyze it. It's quite easy. And we can see that what, uh, if we start with the equals proposition of all nodes, like over the algorithm, we see that the dynamics rotates between this equals proposition and the solution, just like Rover. And it does so in a, a time that scales the square root of the number of elements in the Hubert space, which we can also show that it's optimal. Uh, this is just how the probability increases with time. It's again very similar to Rover's algorithm. And, and so, actually, if I really get one, they prove a lower bound for this sort of problems. So for any choice of HD, uh, which can also be time dependent, we cannot do better than this, right? So this is a continuous time and always Grover's uh, uh, lower bound. Um, and so, okay. Uh, now we also have an adiabatic version of the quantum search algorithm, as probably all of you know. So the idea is that and then to interpolate between this equals proposition, the projector of, uh, on the equals proposition state, and, and interpolate the Hamiltonian so that we get the ground state of this projector and find the solution, right? Now, there is a way to forget here because uh, if we do the naive thing and just do the linear schedule uh, and just go from 0 to 1 in some time uh, linearly, then uh, you don't get back to the over speed up. You, you actually, I don't remember exactly what it is, you this n. And to get the proper speed up, you need to use the knowledge of the position of the void crossing. So here you can show that the void crossing is at one half. And basically you have to go fast when the gap is big, and slow enough when the gap is small. And only then you get back the proper speed up. So this is uh, an important result in the field, uh, derived by Jeremy Bonin and Nicolas in 2002. Okay? So please remember this because I'll, come, I'll mention this again a bit later. Um, all right, so let's go back to continuous time quantum models and search problems. So how do we define a search problem on a graph like the continuous time quantum models? So we have our Hamiltonian that has this marked uh, this oracle term, and it has the Laplacian, which includes the connectivity of the graph. Now here the choice of the Laplace is not very important. We could choose the adjacency matrix. Both of them are valid Hamiltonians. They are both emission symmetric graphs. Uh, if we do it classically, you need to use the Laplacian to, to conserve probability. Uh, but yeah, so, and then we have uh, the gamma and the stopping rate, and it, what, it, what happens is that you need to tune this gamma very precisely to make this work. And so, in the original work by Charles and Boston, they proved a few things. So, first of all, they proved that, uh, well, this was actually already proven, that for the complete graph, uh, basically the problem of searching the mark in a complete graph reduces to the analog version of Grover that I presented you just before, because there the adjacency matrix is basically proportional to this one-dimensional protector that I mentioned just before. And so of course here it, this is optimal. We need to choose this gamma parameter that I mentioned to you as one over n here. For the hypercube, we need to choose it in a different way, but uh, we can also show that it's optimal. And equivalent, there is, there is an, uh, an adiabatic uh, version of this result. Now, they also analyze for lattices, and for lattices, actually, there's a sort of a, a transition depending on the dimension. So, for dimension less than three, there's no more significant speed up, and speed ups only start to appear, like quadratic speed ups only start to appear at equals four and larger. So one of the questions that I, I looked at in my PhD is that okay, there was a lot of words uh, trying to understand well, what graphs can give this optimality or not. In some sense, it's a fundamental question about continuous time, uh, quantum computing, and certain problems. So I, I'm not going to mention what, what was done in all these words, but I just want to say that there are a lot of them. And so uh, one of the motivations of my research in my PhD and uh, related to my postdoc was to obtain general results about the performance of this search algorithm. And one of the things we did uh, back in 2016 was to analyze the performance on random graphs. Okay? 
So we have a graph of n nodes, and uh, these two nodes are connected with the uh, probability. So this is, the, let's say, for example, the simplest model of random graphs. It's called the Erdos Random Random Graph, defined by n and b, which is probability of connection. And I wanted to understand whether the search algorithm also works. And so we try numerically with some heuristic choices of gamma, and we see that uh, even if we so but, uh, these random graphs, you, you can see them in breaking nodes from the complete graph, breaking edges, sorry, from the complete graph, right? So we can break, let's say, 90% of the edges and tune gamma accordingly, and we see that the performance is still very similar to the so the red curve is the perfect case, let's say the complete graph that you know that it works. So we break 90% of the edges, we risk your gamma and still this works. We break 99% of the edges, we risk your gamma, by the way, we're for a thousand nodes, if I remember correctly. And we see it still kind of works. So where is the threshold effect? And so what we proved is to a sufficient condition for optimal quantum search, which uh, I'll formulate it here in terms of the normal like Laplacian. So I'm going to divide Laplacian by this uh, norm by its largest eigenvalue. And so now in this normalized Laplacian, I have my eigenvalue is going from 0 to 1. And, and so I have a spectral gap. So by the way, under general conditions, the, the lowest eigenvalue is 0. And, um, and so I, an important uh, uh, property of graphs in graph theory is the spectral gap, which is basically the second largest eigenvalue. And, and so we show that uh, the constant spectral gap is a sufficient condition for optimal quantum search. Okay? So as long as the, this normalized Laplacian is a constant that does not scale with the problem size, then we get optimal. <coughs> now, and this allows us to get the threshold for P for the connectivity of the dark and right graph for which we, we know that there's optimal search. Okay? So now, in my postdoc in Brussels, together with Shantana and, and Jeremy Roland, we tried to generalize the results and really say, derive as general as we could sufficient conditions. So you give me a graph, I test these conditions, and I and say whether search is optimal. These are not necessarily sufficient conditions, but they are sufficient, and they seem to be good enough to reproduce a lot of non results in the literature. So I won't go into a lot of details, but basically it's uh, just conditions that depends on functions of the overlaps of the Mark node with the eigenstates of the Laplacian and with the eigenvalues of the, the Laplacian. And uh, so we define these functions, and, and so in terms of these functions, we can define the sufficient conditions. So what we show is that if the spectral gap scales as something larger than one over square root of n, and again, the number of nodes in the graph, uh, then we know how to analyze quantum search. We know how to choose the optimal, the, the best possible choice for the gamma parameter, which sets the hopping rate of the quantum wall. And, and for this optimal choice, we know what is the performance. We can write it in terms of the spectral function, as well as the success probability. So this defines some at least simple to write. They're not very simple because the functions are not very simple, but at least you can write it in a short way. Uh, optimality conditions for, for the algorithm, and which uh, at the time at least reproduced, uh, many, uh, I think, all the results you could find about optimal search on different graphs. And we also found examples where the Charles and Lowstone approach does not provide uh, quadratic speed, up, even when we have gaps that are you know, larger than one of the square root 10. And this is a funny example because it's a graph that is based on the movements of a rook on a rectangular chess board. But I won't go into details. Uh, so so we, we basically realized that this um, approach has some certain limitations. And this uh, pushes us to go further and define other sorts of quantum walks uh, and more general results, which are a bit less intuitive to explain. So I just wanted to mention that this Exist. And for this kind of quantum walks, we can actually obtain very general quadratic speed ups for such problems for any Markov chain, basically, under very mild conditions, and any number of Markov elements. Because the Charles and Wilson approach, once you put more than one Markov element, it becomes very difficult to find one. And these results also exist for discrete time quantum walks, so from 2020, and, and our results are from 2020. 
All right, so I want uh, I will make a transition now towards optimization. Uh, I don't know how much time I have still. Twenty. Okay. Um, right. So can we use anything of what we have derived before and, and try to understand better the performance of quantum model optimization? Um, so the first part, the first thing I want to talk about is what, 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 how can we even form, formalize the problem, right? So this was a search uh, anatomy, right? Uh, the graph of and the mark element. So this is a specific case of a Hamiltonian that contains the quantum log part, of course, we want to keep the quantum log, and some cost function where, um, well, I could put a minus here, it doesn't really matter, uh, but to put a minus here as well. But let's say I want to maximize the cost function instead of minimizing it. And, and so this cost function is one if the, my bit string is the solution and zero otherwise, right? So this is uh, the cost function of the search problem. But and as we all know, for more general uh, uh, optimization problems, we have other cross functions, for example, Isaac models, classical Isaac models. And so, can we use this kind of approach to optimize the cross function? Right? And so, indeed, we can put here some problem Hamiltonian and we can keep our quantum log. And so, this problem Hamiltonian can be, for example, the, an Isaac model. And, and again, we have this problem of choosing the best possible hopping rate to make this work. Uh, but what we would like, ideally, is to prove anything analytically about this uh, formally to start with. Right? And by the way, um, if I choose my graph to be the hypercube, then the, the Laplacian of the hypercube is basically proportional to the uh, you know, local sigma axis that is used in quantum annealing. So in some sense, a particular case of this problem is related to the quantum annealing Hamiltonian, uh, and we know that it's very hard to solve. Right? So proving anything about the spectrum of, of these Hamiltonians is very difficult. Uh, so we will try to restrict ourselves to things that we can prove. And, and so maybe the easiest thing that one could possibly try to prove about this is whether we can get quadratic speed up over classical unstructured. All right. We know that in general we can do better than unstructured search, much better than unstructured search, even with task of algorithms. But can we prove uh, that quantum mechanically you can get this quadratic speed that is over task of unstructured search? And even this is not so trivial, at least as far as we manage to do. So uh, to do unstructured search, basically you forget that this problem Hamiltonian can have some structure. So we, we introduced as the, the graph, um, the complete graph, okay? So this complete graph is not a complete graph in the spin, so it's really a complete graph in the full Hilbert space, which is something non-physical, which would require very high order, high, highly novel terms. But let's see, but this is what, this is the analysis of a quantum search, uh, of the analog quantum search, so, so let's see what we can do with this. And now we can notice that there's a lot of similarity with the problem that we analyzed before. Because before we had the graph Hamiltonian here, and, and we had the one dimension projector. And we had the sum of these two things. And here we have something which is the same structure, but now the one dimension projector is related to the Hamiltonian of the complete graph. And the problem Hamiltonian will be different. And in principle, it could be anything diagonal in the computation. Maybe even not on a computational basis, we could still apply what we derived before for this sufficient condition for optimal quantum search. We could apply it here and try to derive the best possible value of gamma that will lead to the optimal performance of this kind of search, this kind of search strategy for ground states of this problem. But there is a this is not so easy. Okay, we, we, we can derive the, this condition. So using our previous results, we can say that the best possible choice for gamma here is one over n. So now n is the yeah. So n, I, I changed a little bit notation from before. I'm sorry. Uh, so capital N is the Hilbert space. Here these are the eigen energies of the these are these are the energies of the problem Hamiltonian, and this is the ground state energy of the problem Hamiltonian. And the alpha are the degeneracies of 
each of the eigenvalues. So I sum over all alpha that are not translated away from this equation with up. And if I am able to choose this gamma star, I indeed can obtain the expected quadratic speed of our uncertain search approaches. But, but there's a problem. How do you even compute this? Right? This seems to be a hard thing to compute, and indeed we could show that uh, for a typical problem, for example, with the Ising model, the problem of computing this quantity exactly, classically, right, because this is something you need to compute beforehand to run the quantum algorithm, is Sharpie hard. So if you are not familiar with Sharpie hard, you can think of it as worse than NB hard. Sharpie complexity class of related to counting problems, of uh, counting number of solutions of NB hard problems, and NB hard is as hard as finding ground state of like models. So this is very hard. And and the way we show this, the proof idea, is to, uh, to show that if there was an algorithm to compute this exactly, we could use it a polynomial number of times in this number of bits, not in the size of the Hilbert bits. So we could use it in an efficient way. So if there was an efficient algorithm for this, we would have an efficient algorithm to estimate amplitudes of IPP circuits. And IPP circuits are, are one of these proposals of uh, Computational advantage similar to Boson Santi, and we know that the amplitudes are, are sharply hard to compute. So we map the problem of predicting this optimal gamma for one modes uh, to the problem of estimating uh, IPP circuit, okay? uh, amplitudes of IPP circuit, which is a, a basically the depth one theory way to compute. Uh, so, okay, so what are the consequences for the depth one computing? If we try to use uh, uncertain search strategy to solve an optimization problem, uh, we know that the best possible running time is order square root of capital N, so it's exponential. This we already knew because there, there's an hour, uh, there's a paper from 2008 which is actually called How to Make Quantum Undivided Algorithm Fail, which is not used the structure of the search problem, of the problem I'm trying to optimize, right? Um, but, um, but yeah, but the problem we are trying to mention here is that even to achieve this quadratic speed, up, we need to know the position of the avoided crossing. Because as I told you before, to solve such problems, we need to optimize our adiabatic schedule using the knowledge of the position of the avoided crossing. And the result that I showed you before can be translated, the complexity result that I showed you before can be translated to the proving complexity of predicting the position of the avoided crossing for this such problem. And so computing this uh, avoiding crossing position is also sharply helpful. Okay? So, yeah, so this is still an open question for me. If you have some insights, please let me know. So can any platform computing pro pro provide provable quadratic speed ups? So these are worst case speed ups, right? We know that in practice it is better. Uh, but for any optimization problem, over uncertain search. And there's some hope because uh, we don't need to compute this exactly, so our complexity theoretic results are about exact computation. But if we, ma we manage, well, we don't know actually what is the complexity to prove it up to the accuracy you actually need. And the accuracy you actually need should give us something like one over square root of capital N, so exponentially the number of uh, bits. But, um, but yeah, in this way. So if there is a classical algorithm that is able to compute this value up to this precision, scanning as square root of time, then we can then use the quantum algorithm and solve the problem. Uh, or else we can maybe try to use the dynamics of the, the quantum algorithm itself to, and try and error to actually try to find the position of the wave crossing and solve the problem. We don't know yet. So, Let's move to numerics because analytics is difficult. And, and so, in a collaboration with uh, Vic Cannon, who you can see here in the audience, Nicola Chancellor, and some are students and master students that I passed uh, my uh, Vic Cannon group in Durham, uh, Satamana, so Lasse, Horatio, and David, we've been doing some uh, numerical simulations about uh, heuristic uh, quantum optimization algorithms using continuous time quantum walk ideas. And this is inspired by earlier work done at Durham by David and Nicola. Uh, so, 
There, the idea is to, again, uh, just use the Hamiltonians that we know can be implemented in a mini machine, but in a time independent way, and analyze, for example, the Sherman Kirkpatrick model. And, and here, they've obtained these uh, very interesting results that, in some sense, the simplest thing you can do is to quench this Hamiltonian and let them uh, run for a short bit. I lost my mouse, sorry. And, and see what happened in just method. And of course, we, the probability of obtaining the solution is going to be exponentially small, but can this, well, what is it exponentially small, right? And so here the search is interesting because we don't require much coherence. We just do a short quench to the Hamiltonian and observe it. And we can even evoke it for random time. And this is what they do here in this work. And you can already see that uh, with some heuristic choices of this gamma parameter, we can do better than Grover, because Grover here would be n to 0 0.5, right? So this is uh, still worse than uh, classical algorithms, but we see that we're already exploiting uh, the structure of the problem and doing something a little bit more non-trivial. And we could improve this further, and this is what we're trying to understand now, how much improvement we can get, by doing multiple stages of this problem. So we've seen that, um, so the idea here is to apply quantum Hamiltonian for some time of the T1 with some gamma parameter here. Sorry, I changed the notation again because these are different papers with different notations. Um, and um, so with this uh, hopping parameter gamma, and here we have our hypertube Hamiltonian or the reverse uh, IPP model. And yeah, and so we, we can try to see what happens when it's uh, several stages of this, and in a way, this is a, just a different, as uh, Lucas Brady was talking <coughs> before, here in a way is, a, in some sense, a particular discretization of uh, possible ways that you can interpolate between this Hamiltonian and that Hamiltonian, and, and here we have a different one, right? But we know in some sense we have a, a more freedom because we can apply the two Hamiltonians at the same time, and so, uh, an obvious question is, can, can we actually do something better than QAOA? So, one thing that we can prove uh, is that if we use this sort of discretization as a way to simulate any continuous time evolution, any, sorry, time-dependent interpolation between HP and HP, uh, then the multi-stage quantum mock simulation should be better. Why? Simply because, again, as I said, we are able to apply these two terms at the same time. So the error in the simulation should be only proportional to the time derivative of this Hamiltonian. So we can divide it into small steps and try to simulate some small time steps and try to simulate the time step using this sort of, let's say, generalized quantum gates, these quantum walks. And, and then uh, our, our error can only depend on, uh, on h dot, on time derivative, because if there was no time derivative, then we would do it exactly. We would have exactly the Hamiltonian that we can apply. Now, QAOA, if we try to use it to simulate adiabatic uh, uh, schedules or any uh, continuous time interpolation schedule, then we will have two errors, right? We have one coming from the time dependence, in proportion to h dot, max, and, and another coming from uh, the fact that we are trotterizing the evolution. We can only apply one of these Hamiltonians at each time, we cannot apply them both at the same time. So we have two errors, whereas here we have one. So in some sense, and we expect to, to have better performance over the way away. And we've done some numerics, which is not final. So the plots can will look nicer in a future paper. Uh, so in a single stage of the continuous time quantum walk, we, we can explore the full parameter. So here we are, we are plotting the expected value of the problem Hamiltonian energy, uh, which is a, a typical thing we can observe, a typical figure of Mary. And with the quantum walks, we can actually reach values that are, let's say, minus 10. Uh, so this is a specific in instance of uh, the Sherrington Kirkpatrick model, whereas to way away, we, we, can, we can only achieve minus 7.5. Okay, this is one example, which is and for five stages, 
what we can also try to do if we want to make some nice plots is to choose some heuristic parameter choices to start, let's start from a very large, a large value of gamma and ramp it down so that at the end the program economy dominates because we know that this is a strategy of mathematics where you want computing and it's a strategy that should give good uh, success probabilities. So this is a particular way to do so. We also are exploring other ones. And we do again, uh, we see the, the same, uh, we, we see the significant improvement between the two approaches. So this is ongoing work. Uh, and yeah, we'll do probably more things about this. And hopefully we'll have something on the other at the end of the year. And yeah, so this leads me to the end of my talk. So just to summarize, from the standpoint, most of my simple ways to design search and optimization algorithms. For the optimization part, although it's simple, we don't know exactly how it performs. Then uh, there are general results about performance for search. Well, it's also called spatial search because we're searching on the graph. And now we identified the possible limitation to the improvable quadratic speedups for the vatican unstructured search. And maybe uh, we obtain the only uh, complexity theoretic result about predicting the position of the avoid crossing. I don't know if this is true. If someone knows about some other result, uh, please let me know. And yeah, and the, the final point is that these multi stage quantum log strategies seem to outperform QA away. And of course, the work on this. And thanks for your attention. Thank you.